Hi you guys, welcome back to another video here at Rule 1 Model Railways. I've been quite quiet recently and I will let you know why just after this. So welcome back to another video here at Rule 1 Model Railways. My name's Nick, thanks for joining us today. So, the reason we've been quite quiet recently is due to the increased costs of model railways. Um, they're quite unprecedented really in recent times, with prices going up almost 100% compared to maybe 6 or 7 years ago. And, personally, I couldn't justify the outlay anymore, because of how expensive it was. So. Recently, I've been looking into ways to make the hobby cheaper. And a clue's running around right in front of you now. I've actually bought my first Kato uh, Japanese intercity style stock. It goes on the back of where I had from years and years ago. I have the Kato train that I bought about 15 years ago. And this is my second set that I ever own now. But... The new prices for these, and hold on to your seats, you'll be shocked, is around about 90 to 100 pounds for a brand new set of this. And you can find it from a lot of retailers in Japan. In comparison to most modern UK releases uh, from the likes of Graham Farish, in Engage should be looking around about the same sort of price of 300 to 400 pounds for such a set which is not viable anymore for me now this, this is a Kato set as I said earlier and it even has a tilt mechanism this is the Konomi series 885 um, Japanese set as you can see there it runs perfectly fine and there's nothing wrong with it but this was a recent treat for myself uh, with the rest of the money before payday. Now, going along the lines of making the hobby cheaper, I have been 3D printing a lot of stuff recently. And we'll move this way. You can see here I 3D printed two track stands. The track to go around uh, a higher level without it having to be on the table which leads me on to what I have been up to recently and it's completely almost free of charge to me really uh, I have 3D printed all of the scenery out on this layout and 2D printed any of the roadbed or the pavement the wood itself was completely free it was reclaimed off cuts from a builder's yard that was chucking them out and uh, so I built this as you can see, it's a Japanese style viaduct and Japanese style buildings in there. And moving around the back, I've used cheap component electronics to, uh, as to direction, go that way, direction to go that way, and just a cheap old component based controller. And that's it. So the layout is all self-contained apart from the Kato track that I'm using. And as you can see, it just clips in. So this is glued down. But the track I used to come out and around the back just clips in so it's a complete space saver as well. And this ends up being my uh, scenic area. So I've stuck the power car on and I have put on the power on the back. You can see here how it works. So. Turn that one off, turn this one on, turn the controller and the train should come back to us again. Oh. There you are, and I'll do the same back the other way. That's it. But everything on this has been 3D printed on the printer. 
and then I just spray painted it. What I'm going to do now, I'm going to turn the light upside down so you can see the wiring I've done. There we are, that's it. So it's just a button switch, power, controller knob, control circuits, and another button. And that is it. And then the two red and black wires out, out the side of the board. They are the power to the track, wherever I decide to connect it to. I haven't quite got that far yet, deciding what I'm doing with that, but uh, this controller unit here cost me about a fiver. The buttons cost me again around a fiver. And then the plug socket and the plug that came with that uh, was around six pounds. And that is it. That is all the outlay I spent on this layout. The 3D printed stuff cost me around about... 20 30 pence a building and if we turn around now we can actually see one more of those legs that's printed out and they're about 20 30 pence each so really it's for nothing don't cost hardly anything so the kato track will just plug in and out as you can see simple as that plugs in it's not quite in Okay, it clips in you see that's in and underneath the sections I have these stand pieces they will go underneath just like that and hold it on a table so nice and simple the whole thing will fit inside a suitcase go to exhibitions that sort of thing uh, just on a bus if I want to really really easy but again, the whole thing's cost me less than £30, including the wiring, um, the buildings, the wood, scenery, the track I already had. Um, but again, that track kit is not expensive either. It's about 30 quid for the loop if you do go out and buy it. And then you can use that for anything, any layout. You can buy more of these straights, make a load of these if you wanted to. These crates, a pair of those, it cost you about, uh, what, about four pounds. And then you can keep the loop bit for around the back and you can make loads of these and have lots of different layouts should you want to. But it's a way to keep costs down, especially at the moment with those costs being so high. I just want to talk to the main manufacturers there about their pricing. Because if I can build that layout above of all the scenery for around £30, and I'm no expert at doing this sort of thing, they're going to find their market share in the next 10 years diminishes quite quickly. Um, it only takes another person that's quite good at 3D printing with a 3D printing farm to basically put these guys out of business. There's, there's no two ways around it with the scenic sort of side. Um, it's not the fact that people aren't buying the models at the higher prices they are um, I wouldn't but there are people that are still buying them the issue comes in is that where the British manufacturers their manufacturers of British outline locomotives and scenery uh, are leaving themselves completely open to a competitor coming in so if I can design and print these models and these right this viaduct doesn't look too bad actually I would probably have gone to a shop and bought that each section there as I say has cost me about 50 pence in the shop what would you say at least seven eight pounds a piece is a reasonable price but the price is going up and up and up you don't really know what they would be now if I, somebody that doesn't know too much about 3D printing and design, can design such a viaduct and it come out okay like this, it only takes somebody who owns a 3D printing farm, so a load of those 3D printing, uh, 3D printers all together, to get their act together and start printing those off en masse. 
for Hornby, Backman, Depot and the like, uh, or any of the scenic manufacturers there to be on the back foot because they're still going to have their overheads but no way to match the prices that the 3D printers can. As I say, within the next 10 years, technology is coming on quite quickly. I think they've got something to worry about. And as I say, it's not the prices currently. I mean, they're high. And people are still buying at these prices. But who's going to buy at these prices when a similar product is available much cheaper? It's just a no-brainer. It's, it's not that they haven't got the money. They have got the money. But there's no reason to spend more when you don't have to. And that will eventually be what happens, I think. But for now on this channel, I'm going to explore the world of Kato, Tomix, Tomi Tech, all those manufacturers, and see what it can provide for us in the hobby. See if there's anything worth having. So far, it looks quite promising. But uh, if you've liked the video, do hit subscribe and the like button. Take care, and we'll see where this story leads. Goodbye, and take care.